Hello and welcome to this YouTube video. My name is Grace with creationalcodes.com. I'm so joyous that you're here with me today for this conversation, this deep dive, this vulnerable chit chat about victim consciousness and why we need to completely remove ourselves from that consciousness, that energy. So I really want to break down all the different pieces and parts of victim consciousness and why this is such a horrible spiral to get stuck inside of and I think a lot of spiritual people especially when you become aware of like the ascension timelines the passages and pathways to get to your greatest version of self there's a lot of perfection that comes up there's a lot of ego that comes up there's a lot of force and push and trying to be somebody that we're not and when we're not that person, you know, when we don't reach these heights, these perfect versions of self, you know, we fall back into the victim consciousness. And these polarities, these, you know, different ends of the spectrum where it's like, I want to be perfect, I need to be this specific thing, or the other end of the spectrum, I'm a victim, I'll never get there, I'm not well off, or whatever, we tell ourselves, like, even though that these are different ends of the spectrum, they're pretty much the same thing. And it's this, this disallowance of softness. When we connect to our greatest and highest version of self, there's so much softness for expansion, for becoming, for the spaciousness that allows us to be that version of self outside of the victim consciousness. So there's so many things I want to talk to you about today. But there's so many things that I want to unravel in this conversation and I'm going to list some of them so that we kind of just get the ball rolling within how these unfold and how these hold space for us or how they kind of confuse us and distort our vision, distort our realities. So victim consciousness steals from us. That's the first topic. Negative, the negative spiral and the directive correspondence to that negative mental spiral. The data behind negative thinking as a directive, the precursor to depression and how negative thinking is that, um, divine love, trusting, commanding your space as self-orientation, knowing what you are aligned to, and this is kind of self-mastery and how we allow ourselves to become aligned and what that means for us and how we hold space for that to occur. Um, and my experience resonating with people, places, and things, and removing myself from this frequency band of victimization consciousness and this lesser than and this kind of numbing within self. So much energy has been moving today for me. And I feel like I might just start with my experience because I feel like this kind of opens the doorways to, you know, connectivity and how, you know, some people might be able to relate to the experiences that I have experienced and so when we come into understanding of our greatest versions of self when we want to release ourselves from the spirals the encasements and geometries of victim consciousness it is quite tricky because it is all around us and when people pocket themselves into groupings and you know as a society when people pocket themselves into this is what we do this is how we act it's really hard to pop that bubble and exit because, you know, it's surrounding you. So a really good way to start is just resensitizing ourselves, resensitizing ourselves to what we're listening to. If it relates to victim consciousness, if it relates to I have no power over my life, over myself, over my worth, the music that we're listening to, how it's indoctrinating us or programming us towards our greatest version of self or keeping us in limitation and victimhood in lack and lesser than as well we need to look at our family situation you know what are the belief systems in our family structuring and this is deep work guys like this is intensive and it's painful and it's like a very vulnerable situation to place yourself in but this is you know how we get to the other side of that and we need to look at our family situations we need to look at our lineage lines we need to look at these people that surround us and have kind of created this foundation that our human exists off of this this ego this mind this body all of the programmings that this human 
has developed off of that's from family school friends maybe some tv shows that you watched when you were a kid these have all developed the foundation for how we see ourselves what we believe we're worthy of how we believe we should trust ourselves or not trust ourselves and trust god or not trust god and so we do need to look at family music movies like self and all the things that develop self so for myself you know, that really meant, okay, I'm not watching these shows with my family or friends anymore. I just don't have space for it. I'm not going to listen to this specific type of music. It makes me feel crummy. It makes me feel belittled. It makes me feel repressed. It makes me feel tired or sad. I'm not going to engage in specific conversations with people because it feels like it's um, re-encrypting this falsity in my mind and heart and brain. And I'm open through my healing journey to have communication and contact and of course amazing conversations with people but being aware of what are we actually talking about <laughs> you know do you know those conversations where you're kind of just like pulled into either drama or pulled into you know conversations about politics or people or artists and immediately there's this need to agree or immediately there's this need to you know, numb ourselves out and become, yeah, I agree with you, like, that person's cool, or, like, that thing's cool, or, yeah, that person's annoying, like, we always, like, want to coincide with what other people are doing or believing in, but really, that's such an injustice to our greatest version of self. We're limiting ourselves inside of these frequency bands, we're keeping ourselves blocked and limited, and inside of judgment, inside of these um, negative spirals, these negative pockets where really that music or TV show or person or drama is so exhausting, but we're addicted to it. And I was listening to The Pleading Gateway with Z Earth Star Healer. She's an amazing person, amazing um, healer on earth right now, holding so much space. And she shared that when people are numbed out and we're trying to always be the same with everybody else, that's actually just us fulfilling our karmic cycles over and over and over again, like keeping ourselves bondaged. And it's so true, you know, that we just want to be comfortable with what other people are doing. And this is not what serves our greatest embodiment. This is not what serves our highest and most palpable and most potent version of self. We don't have to agree with everybody. We don't have to make everybody else comfortable. You need to focus on what enlights, invigorates, and frees you from this illusion of, you know, um, separation and victimhood and exhaustion and the world is a horrible place. Like that is such a false, horrible programming that has been embedded into reality, the mainstream media. So my experience has really been just detaching from that and pushing that away and not coinciding with it anymore. I don't have space for it anymore. It doesn't agree with me anymore and that's okay. I don't have to do what everybody else is doing. And when we are really vulnerable with ourselves, it's incredibly uncomfortable. Today, I had a conversation with a friend where I didn't feel loved or honored or revered or held by her. And she had made a comment towards me that felt a bit nasty so I reacted instead of responded and I chose to kind of tell her to back off and don't, you know, communicate with me like that. And it ended up being this lesson where I have to be very vulnerable with myself like, okay, am I showing up with softening or am I showing up again in the wounded victim consciousness of me versus her? She doesn't love me. I'm not being held. And I need to hold space for myself to witness when that happens. How do I respond to all people, places, and things, all experiences? How do I choose to respond? And is it in a quickness and an aggression and a re reaction? Or is it in a calm, peaceful, softening, curiosity response where I know my worth, I know I'm loved, I know I'm cherished, I know I'm perfect. And other people don't define me when they speak about me in any way, shape, or form.
So that's just another example of this consciousness, this frequency band, and we need to become aware of it, aware of how we're leaking energy, where we are falling out of alignment with self, alignment with who we want to be, how we are responding to people, how we are choosing to react. It's all so important. So victim consciousness really steals our energy from us because it makes us feel like we're lesser than. It makes us feel disempowered. It makes us feel, and this is just my experience with it, and I ask that you create your own understanding of what victim consciousness is with you in your life and how it shows up for you. An example of victim consciousness would be, woe is me. This always happens to me. I can't get out of this. God abandoned me. Nobody loves me. I won't be able to ever make enough money. I won't be able, like these are all consciousness and ideas and belief systems that are formed upon this frequency and entrapment of I am lesser than. I am not cherished and loved and divine. If we are the victim, then we are not being held and revered by God. That would be a belief system that I do not feel cherished and loved and cared for and protected. I'm the victim. I have been hurt and nobody cares about me and it's not going to get better. This is a belief system, right? And this is incredibly draining for the body to feel like it's not loved like it's not cherished, like it's not abundant. These are all falsities that really distort our DNA, our field. It's so imperative that we are aware of our field. Even the slightest belief system, even the slightest projection that enters our field can affect how we feel day to day. You know, and even that story I shared with my friend, like the last week I've been feeling kind of out of it. And that was an example of me being in my woundedness, right? So when we fall out of alignment with self, we're not judging self, but we can witness, okay, these are like frequencies being kind of pushed at us via the radio, EMFs, TV shows, movies, all of these belief systems are literally being pushed at us from society. They want us belittled. They want us not believing in ourselves. And we need to refuse that. We need to hold divine space for self. I am perfect. I am amazing. I am abundant. I am God's child. And when we do that, we heal from this societal karmic looping, this societal entrapment of, you know, being encaged inside of a falsity of self. We are so beloved and holy and cherished and we are absolutely capable of anything. This human body is absolutely capable of anything if we believed that to be true, right? So these belief systems, these pains in the body and these will occur and be created from experiences of traumatization through childhood um you know having people abandon us you know we are very sensitive absorbent beings and so many of us have been through such traumatizing experiences that we lose trust with ourself we lose trust with god and we lose trust with others we don't trust society even and this creates the battleground, the foundation for this victim consciousness to occur where we believe that we'll never get better. We believe that this is, life's just hard on us. Like, oh, it's just me. It's just, I'm the one off. And that's such a programmed, projected frequency. And even me saying that, it's a collective consciousness that so many people are believing I'm the one off. I will never get better. I will never heal. And that's a victim consciousness that entraps us and keeps us in this negative spiral. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is the, neg the negative spiral and this directive correspondence. So in meditation, I realized that the mind is like a sharp funnel. And the mind wants to have a directive. The mind wants to have a map. It wants to end up somewhere. It's on a mission. And, you know, you'll, you probably might have heard that, you know, um, researchers have discovered that the mind likes solving problems. The mind likes to make sure that it knows every single thing that's going on around it because it's, 
you know, survival mechanism, the ego, the mind, it, it's actively seeking to keep us inside of a comfortable space so that we survive. And this is from, you know, it's a more primitive um, system in the body. So when the mind has a directive and that directive is perhaps from this victim consciousness, I am not enough. The body, the mind is going to pull up all of these experiences to prove you right. To prove that this is true. That you are not worthy enough or that you're not loved. And the problem within this is that people try to fix that directive via the mind. So they try to fix the directive of the mind that is, say, that is literally aiming and driving towards this goal of understanding and knowing that we are not worthy. And it's pulling up all of these puzzle pieces and trying to allow you to understand and agree with this directive. And then the conscience says, wait a second, that's not a good idea. I am loved. And it's like this far off thought, like up here, <laughs> trying to speak out this this prayer of love yourself like witness yourself but this directive is so powerful that nothing can be heard This directive is so powerful that, you know, the funnel cannot hear. Your brain does not even care about these little one-off thoughts up here. It is focused. So we have to witness and be able to witness our funnel. What are we funneling? What are we driving towards? What are we trying to prove to ourselves right here, right now within victim consciousness? You might be trying to prove to yourself that your parents, like these are, these are, untrue and traumatized thoughts that the body is trying to prove and it's trying to prove it not for your betterment but just to understand the idea it's not doing it to heal you or to take you to a sanctuary or to help you actually heal and unfold that trauma it literally just knows the thought and it knows the correlations to the thought and it's trying to create this web right? So it could be any negative thought from my parents don't really love me, which is might be a false thought. It might be a traumatized thought. It might be an experience from childhood to I'll never have enough money to survive. I'll be stuck in survival um, mechanisms forever. All of these belief systems and the mind is focused upon it. And it's going to bring up all of these traumatized experiences to make that happen, to make that your reality, your mind is focused on creating your reality. So within the directive and the pinpointed funneling of this thought that it's trying to actualize, it's trying to literally prove you right, <laughs> but in a horrible way. So this is where a lot of people, you know, we get stuck because we're trying to prove ourselves right and we're not available and open to other people's opinions because we don't trust them and we only trust ourselves and we're stuck inside of these loopings and these cyclings of I'm not loved, I'll never heal, all of this stuff, this victim consciousness that is driving towards an empty well, a cliff that like leads nowhere. And so when we witness, so that's really intense, <laughs> so that's really intense. So when we witness this funnel, this directive, we can locate and understand, okay, my brain, my mind is trying to prove a reality true. This might have been a reality in my past. This is no longer my reality right now, and it's not the reality I want in the future. So I'm not going to let my mind prove me right. I have all of the evidence to prove this situation right. That's fine and dandy. But this isn't the reality that I want. This isn't the reality that I choose. So I'm going to 
fix my directive, change my directive, allow myself to soften, to crumble into the fact that that's a falsity, that's a painful experience that I'm ready to heal from. So we fix our directives, we locate and understand what we're driving towards and why that may or may not be serving us. And how do we fix our directives? So we really need to, you know, focus on who it is that we want to be and be vulnerable enough, be fearless enough to have a different experience, have a different idea, have a different thought. The mind is what creates our reality. So if your mind is constantly pulling up these horrible experiences, say, hey, mind, I want to focus on some good experiences. I want to embody this joyous person. What does that feel like? And when you give your mind a task and you genuinely give your mind this task, your mind will actively try to pursue it for you. The mind in this way is meant to be a worker for us. It's meant to serve us and support us. So we could talk about that for like ever, but let's dive into a different topic. Um, this is the precursor to depression. This is the precursor to why people feel like limited and encaged and horrible and sad and repressed is because of these thoughts, these negative spirals, these negative directives where all aspects of our life are trying to prove us right. Even when you're listening to a song, you might be like in the car. And you've had this idea that, okay, my friends don't want to hang out with me. I don't feel loved, blah, blah, blah. This song comes on. It's like a super sad song. And immediately your mind's like, yep, this is your reality. Just depression, just sadness. And it's like the complete opposite of a spiritually um, in tune and like super like you know when you get in that vibe where everything's working out perfect from you and then you get in the car and the song's like the best song your favorite song and you're like this is perfect it's the actual it's like the complete opposite of that where it's everything is driving to make you believe that you are a victim and that this is your experience and this is your engagement and this is your purgatory so we are the creators so we create that reality and that's something that we're choosing to live in and operate within. And it's a falsity. It's a horrible experience. We don't need to live that way. And we need to create awareness when we are actively pursuing that fallen consciousness, that victim consciousness. So I don't want this video to be too long, but I do want to dive into allowing yourself to be enveloped by divine love. And what does that mean? So there's so much amazingness within this reality, within creation. It's so loving to us. It wants to hold space for us. It wants to nourish us. And we have to be open to the vulnerability of being wrong in our past versions of self, to being open to acknowledging that I am wounded. I have been wounded. I have been hurt. And I'm open to the divine love of life, to the divine sanctuary that God has prepared for me in this soul that I am a child of God. I am creator. And this can be uncomfortable for people because you're switching up your reality. You're changing your directive. You're changing your gnosis of self. And this is where we have to really soften and allow ourselves to become malleable, which is really hard when we're stuck, stuck in survival mode, when we're stuck in that tenseness of I'm going to protect myself no matter what. And the softening, the curiosity, the malleableness, the fluidity of creation is one that when we do do that, life will respond to us. It'll soften with us. It'll hold space for us. And if you've ever experienced a day where you are forcing, you are aggressively driving to work, you're spilling your coffee everywhere, you're getting every red light, you're showing up angry, you're kind of angry at people because they're reflecting back at you what you're experiencing. And then it's just like this constant, 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 constant of what we're experiencing because that's our frequency, right? But when we soften and when we become curious, life opens up to us. It opens us up to potentialities because we are not forcing a reality. We are allowing a reality. We are allowing God to show us what it wants to show us. 
and we must command our space and command our lives and command our experiences as creator beings. We need to decide what is it that I'm wanting to experience now and how am I going to hold space for that and how am I going to vulnerably witness victim consciousness and all the ways that I'm interacting with victim consciousness or telling myself that I am a victim or limiting myself or repressing myself because it's comfortable. How much longer am I going to allow that to occur until I change my mind, until I finally acknowledge and soften and become curious about the potentialities that God has for me? When we become self-oriented, when we become self-designated and allocate our fields and allocate our lives, it means that we are choosing our reality. We are allocating our field. We are aware of what is going on around us, the frequencies that we're interacting with, the energies that we're interacting with, the timelines that we're integrating and choosing and holding space for and not holding space for. <clears throat> and when we hold space for the true becoming of self, it just unfolds and unfurls for us and allows us to become that greatest version of self. <clears throat> but we need to we need to allow ourselves to choose that. Because again, like we talked about in the beginning, we are choosing and creating a directive. So if your directive is anger, your life is going to be spiraling towards that. If your directive is joy and prosperity, then you're going to be spiraling towards that and moving and funneling towards that. And, you know, I'm not going to say that joy and prosperity as a funnel is going to be easy to like do because as you do that, all of these parts are going to come up and all of these belief systems are going to come up and all of these ancestral traumas are going to come up and say, hey, that wasn't our reality a couple months ago. That was in our reality a couple years ago. What makes you think you can just change your mind? Don't you want to stay entrapped with us? Don't you want to be in the cycle with us? This is what the cool kids are doing. <laughs> and that's this grouping mentality where everything becomes clogged and systematically structured inside of this is what we do. This is how we karmically cycle. And we are ready to release ourselves from that now. So we can choose our reality and witness these parts come up and hold space for them curiously, lovingly, tenderly and say, hey, you can react and scream and shout and pout and whine and cry and I'm going to hold space for you, but I'm still focused on this directive. Nothing is going to move me from this directive. This is what I've chosen now. And then those parts will come up and they'll have to face themselves and you'll have to face yourself and you'll have to face what your parents have been through maybe and what your ancestors have been through maybe and what you have been through in different lifetimes and different what the collective is going through you're gonna have to hold space for all of that if you're choosing to heal and this is so beautiful and divine and you will be so held and you will be pushed upon a trajectory that is actually fulfilling for you because you're choosing something that is greater than what you were. And if you choose something greater than what you were, then you're going to move into something greater than you are. You're going to have a different life experience, have a different lifestyle. It's all going to become that for you because of what you're choosing, because of what you're aligning yourself to. So we need to know what we are aligning to. We need to know what the frequencies that we're interacting with always. We need to always know what we're interacting with and the repercussions of that, not choosing to know what we're interacting with, kind of numbing out, um, reacting, getting, you know, um, pulled into a wall of like, okay, I'm just going to sit in front of the TV for the next few days. It's like, that is not a good idea because you're choosing to numb out and you're choosing to not look within what is wanting to come up for you. Look at what you are want, what your body and your soul is ready to heal right now. You're actively avoiding it. You're actively numbing it. And 
this is like the hard work. This is the work of coming into greatest our greatest versions of self is that we look at what we're coming into. We witness the parts that are coming up. We witness the timelines that are coming up. We witness all of these versions of self and we hold space for them. And we choose to actively pursue this funnel, this positive funnel, this positive trajectory. We're ready to do this now. So I hope and pray that this video served you. I know this was a little bit more intense, but this is just the reality of coming into our greatest versions of self. I'm moving through the intensity too, so that's probably why it's a little bit more intense today because that's my kind of um, energy today is just kind of witnessing deeply. So I hope and pray that this served you. Please give this video a big like, a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. If you want to, please comment below your experiences, if this video served you, what you want to hear more about, how you're doing. And I will see you next time.